Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski. We have a very specific PvP event to cover today. I usually don't cover PvP events on my channel since there are so many every week and you can kind of check them out in the automated system within the game of Pokemon. But if you don't know, there are multiple PvP tournaments every single week in Pokemon. But this is a special one. This is a once a month kind of event. This is April's team tournament. Now, for those who don't know, a team tournament is essentially a clan or guild type tournament where you kind of pit pit those teams clans or guilds against each other in every single tier of pvp that's why it's my favorite i personally really really enjoy that they they do every single tier and they, they go through them all so for example uh april is going to be ou uu and doubles and then may will be ou uu and u there's only really four main tiers in pokemon pvp ou uu and u and doubles so they only have to cycle through one of them since there's gonna be three tiers each each time but I think it's really cool to see. I think it's a really cool way to do it. I think I think it's incredible. So let's go ahead and get into the more details of this. These are monthly competitive tournaments where teams can test their skills against each other. Players battle as teams <clears throat> three at a time. Teams can switch out which members compete between rounds. So you can use you can switch out. You know you can use any you know teammate during that as long as they're in the team. It should be fine. Um, now there is some important information here, such as I believe it's down here. So there are some guaranteed spots. So I said we'll get into that, I guess, in a sec. But anyways, on each round, three players from each team will place in line. So it'll be like an in-person, in-spot tournament. You have to go to the right location. It's not an automated sort of thing. The top spot will be the OU match. The middle spot will be the UU match. Below there will be doubles. So it'll be kind of in a line. You'll see once you once you're at the location. I'm sure they'll help you out. The details. There's only to be you're only allowed to be 32 teams, and this is an event you have to register for. Uh, it's a 6v6 tournament mode duels. Now keep in mind, there's not actually going to be 32 teams allowed essentially this is very important there actually will, will most likely be only around 27 teams allowed because five teams are given a guaranteed spot since winning past previous team events so if you want to get in if you want to get your team into this please do make sure to show up at the registration date of thursday the 5th of may at 7 p.m utc this is the most important date on this entire thing obviously once you register you know show up to the actual event but the registration's date is always the most important date and time on any sort of event that requires it. Most events don't require, but very special, specific ones do require. So you're, you're going to have to register Thursday, the 5th of May at 7 p.m. UTC. You can register, you know, until one hour before the tournament starts, but usually placements will get thrown out very quickly you need to have that thing pre-typed on this forum post and ready to send at 6 55 p.m utc you know you need to have that thing ready to go you need to be able to send that out as soon as the clock strikes 7 p.m if you want to get your team into this you have to be able to be very quick be very fast very very important i can't stress it enough but anyways the actual tournament will be taking place on saturday the 7th of may at 7 p.m utc now, if you don't get in, you could still show up. You could still, you know, watch. It'll still be a really fun event. I think more players should be encouraged to at least show up to these type of events and just hang out and just watch and just have a fun time. I think that's something that should be a lot more, you know, more encouraged. I should be doing that personally. I think it's a really fun time. It's almost like a baseball baseball game, but for Pokemon, which is kind of lame, but kind of cool. I like that. Uh, so the guaranteed spots are going to go to these uh, five teams, I believe, VGC, HDLM, BR, Past, and SIA, SAI, SAI, those five teams have guaranteed spots as long as they re register. So they could not register, and it could be, like, let's say all of these teams for whatever reason don't register. It could be 32 teams, but if all of the teams register, it could be as few as 27. So I think it's really important to keep in mind. These teams still need to register, but they'll be put on top of registered teams. So they essentially get a bump up in placements for winning, which is understandable. Now, honest registration rules. We'll read those pretty quickly, I think. And then if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. All team needs to provide all information if registration will start. Registration opens on last Thursday of month and ends one hour before the tournament starts. Only registered players are allowed to play. If team will include alts of players fighting for other teams in TT, team is going to last spot of reserves so yeah essentially this is like a punishment um you can't have a team that has like a main player you can't have a, a team you, if you're in the, if you're in the team tournament participating you can't have like alt accounts in other teams to be able to participate for other teams as well you can't like be playing for multiple teams in a team tournament um if you do that 
team is going to last spot on reserves. That essentially means you're being bumped down in the register list to the bottom is what that means. So it's a huge punishment. It essentially means you probably won't be able to play. It's essentially a disqualification. It's essentially a DQ. So do not do not like try to, you know, dual dual team essentially. Editing entries, editing captains allowed at any point, emergencies happen, but we need to have a player to contact. So having the captain is really important. Editing players in is allowed up to an hour before the tournament. If they were not registered to play for another team, that's fair. After this deadline, host has to be informed about the change. Entry must be made by a member of the team. Entry that was originally including one team, but then edited to another one will not be counted at all. If a player who made an entry would change teams, he can't use his spot for a new team. That is really interesting. You, they just really don't want team swapping. They really don't want team swapping or team trading or like player trading in that way. Team must have at least three players ready to fight. Failing to meet this requirement will result in a disqualification and the first reserve team will take place. Yes, of course. So ha there are reserves. So let's say um, you, you, you guys don't get in. You guys don't register fast enough, but you're like the second or third, like you're like the last couple, you know, it's possible you get a reserve slot. So it is always worth, if you really care about it, it is always worth to kind of hang around or go to the event to see if you can take up that reserve slot. Um, now, registration must include all of this information. It is a lot of information. It's probably best to just copy and paste this uh, and go ahead and plug it into the forum. Team name, Team tag, registered players, and the team captain. The team captain is who I will contact to relay any information to your team. This is very, very important. Um, here's a good example. You guys can look through that. I'll link, the, I'll link this whole forum post in the description below if you want to look through details at your own pace. If we notice that your team is an alt team when creating the bracket and reserve list, I will put that team on the last spot of reserves. So one thing, this is essentially a disqualification. Um, being put to the last spot of reserves is essentially a death sentence. I don't see you ever getting into the tournament from that point on. Maximum number of players per team is 20, which is pretty insane, pretty high to be able to have that many people to kind of switch out. That's pretty crazy slash cool, but you know what? I'll, yeah, it's a cool option. Uh, location, Lily Cove, Contest Hall, Channel 4. This is obviously very, very important. After some, probably also Channel 3. So there's going to be a lot of players there is what they're saying. So they'll, be, they'll have to be switch between Channel 4 and Channel 3 to make sure we can see everyone. Um, these are all PVP clauses. This is nothing changed. You can see the you can you know see this information here. If you don't know what this is, uh, I recommend checking out this link here. But onto the prizes. The prize is actually super solid for this event, in my opinion. I actually feel like this event is super or this prize is super super solid, especially compared to the team scavenger hunt. Um, this is like this team scavenger hunt for those who don't know was 500 RP split amongst I believe four players. This is going to be 1500 RP given to three players, so 4500 total. That is really, really good, um, in my opinion. That's that's incredible. Um, being yeah, fifteen hundred per player is is really really good. Um, I just think that's I think, I think it's a great reward. It's a lot of investment. It's really tough to go into a tournament like this and you know and win and be the best. There's a lot of very very talented PvP players in Pokemon, so I'm glad the prize is pretty respective of that. I think it's I think it's a great prize. I think they do a great job on this. Uh, it's just it's very very it's very very impressive. It's very good. Um, plus, you get a guaranteed spot in next month's team tournament, which is obviously super important. Player sprites on next month's tournament poster. I think that's a really cool underrated reward. And then entry into the Pokemon Hall of Fame. I'm not going to lie. This is something that I would love to chase after at some point. I've been delaying this too long. The Pokemon Hall of Fame is one of the coolest coolest things, in my opinion. Um, super underrated piece of Pokemon history to get you know put in there forever and here's the points for this is this is like information re regarding the year competition uh which is something else entirely i'm probably not going to be covering these details during this event but i can go ahead and cover these notes so disconnecting during a match will result in a dq that is a really really important note so i thought i'd go ahead and cover this section do not block the staff from running the event if you disregard requests for you to unblock staff members then you'll be disqualified once your match is called you will have 10 minutes to report to the table no time extensions will be given teams must have three players for each round if team is registered but fails to have three players first reserve team takes the place match that takes more than one hour to complete might result in gm calling the result if the match is showing and showing not not showing any sign of it ending soon excuse me this is a really interesting this is a tough call to make that is an interesting one please listen to staff members instructions during the tournament the behavior of ruining the event for other players on purpose will be met with a yellow card slash red card system of penalties as explained in the main thread here i assume they link it okay players please have a read of changes to team tournament in this thread especially by registration there we go that should be everything 
Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is a pretty big tournament, a lot of information. It's a lot of stuff to absorb. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to future Pokemon content. Check out all the playlist links down below for more Pokemon content after this video is over. Join the Discord. Join a really cool community to learn a lot about the game and see whenever events like this are coming up ASAP. And then finally, if you want to go above, if you've absorbed enough of my content and you appreciate that content, you want to go above and beyond. It's never needed, never required, but going above and beyond and becoming a YouTube member team for five bucks a month. Drop them on a Twitch Prime or Twitch sub over on my Twitch. Hitting up my Patreon or my Venmo are great ways to show that support and keep me as a full-time content creator. You'll also get your name shown at the end credit or end clip of a lot of most of my videos. So it's really cool. So I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Hopefully we can have some fun at the team tournament.